Development Advisory Commission for the City of Fremont. Ms. Cox worked at the White House during the Clinton administration and coordinated White House events to strengthen community relations. She facilitated presidential public policy briefings on business forums and organized presidential delegations. And as you know now, she's been appointed to serve during the 2010 through 14 charter term on the Industry Trade Advisory Committee on Small and Minority Business as a representative of Vantech Thermal Technologies, U.S. Computer Accessories Industry Sector, providing trade policy and expertise recommendations to the Secretary of Commerce and the USTR regarding trade barriers, negotiation of trade agreements, and implementation of existing trade agreements affecting small and minority businesses. The Honorable Ms. Teresa Cox. Thank you so much for the warm welcome, but thank you to the National Coalition of 100 Black Women, to the founding member Eileen Murphy-Reed, to Dr. Maxine Hickman, president of the San Francisco chapter, all the members and board of directors, and also a welcoming my special friends here from the foreign government and elected officials here, as well as dear friends that have come along life's journey. I welcome all of you. I want to first congratulate and uh, the other fellow uh, honorees for all of their work that they're doing, but also that they're helping to enrich all of our lives. And I say, you go, girls. Yeah. <laughs> As my mother always taught me, I need to practice the three Bs. That means be good, be quick, and be gone. <laughs> I would like to dedicate this award to uh, two very special people that uh, helped make a difference in my life. And they're no longer here on this earth, but their memories last forever. And that is my mother, uh, Jackie Duncan. And I thank God for giving me such a wonderful mother who just gave all of herself to me unconditionally. She was very inspiring and courageous and the most courageous person I've ever known because my father died when I was nine years old and my mother was left to raise my two brothers and I on a school teacher's salary. But she instilled the value of education but also the importance of giving back to the community and so today we have a lot of the different members of the organizations that my mother also had played part in that I continue in that legacy as well. But as things happen, my mother got sick with cancer. And so I was turned to look at how we can accomplish our goals. So the community came together. I call it the village. All of you know this. It takes a village to raise a child. And so that village embraced my family so much to make sure that as my mother was going through her cancer treatments, that my brothers and I did not have to drop out of school. So this award is for a lot of them that helped pave the way to continue in my education because I would not be there without all of their help and love. But I'm glad to report that my two brothers and I, we did finish school, we got our undergrads, we went on to MBA school, and even my twin brother got his uh, JD. I know my mother is smiling in heaven right now because she has seven grandkids. <laughs> And one of them is that my daughter is named after her as well, and my son is carrying a legacy name of the family as well. So between all of that, uh, my family is here with me. My two children are not here because they are home with strep throat right now. So, But I also wanted to dedicate this other part of the award to Effie Lee Morris, um, who is a family member of the National Coalition of 100 Black Women but also who I knew her as my second mom, especially coming out here to San Francisco, this lovely city, and having her be a part of my life and introducing me to a lot of you that are here in the audience, and that's how a lot of you I've gotten to grow and know as well. But also she was an inspiration and a mentor in my life and to my children's, and actually she had taught my children how to read. So I greatly appreciate that. And also she brought many of us together through bridging the generations as true to our, our luncheon theme today. But you know, nobody gets here by yourselves. It takes a global community of family, friends, 
And that's what we have right here today. I said family, all of you at these different tables, I want you to meet the family. This is now gone global. <laughs> because we're linked in with Facebook, and we're also tweeting out there with the force that's among us, as I say, salesforce.com. But we're all connected in this world by one way or another. And I'm just grateful that all of you are here today and those that have gone on before us. And I want to thank you from the bottom of my heart. But I want to also say that I don't want to be the first. I, don't want, to, I want to be able to reach back and help others achieve their dreams as well. And that's the importance of why I serve on the Ohlone College Board, to help fight for the scholarships, to be able to have people be able to realize their quality of life and their dreams. And at the same time, being able to help with the small businesses that I speak as a voice as one of the trade advisors on the Industry Trade Advisory Council because we got to be able to have the voice to speak for those that are not able to speak, but also fight for justice and know what is equal. And I think that is important. That that's why it's so important that we do business and international trade with members of Asia because they represent the largest of our economic power and also account for half of the world trade and the largest Facebook users, 150 million, with the world market of 2.7 billion consumers. So equally important, we also got to do international trade with Africa because we know that President Obama visited Africa last year after the G8 summit. And he's sending the message that we have a continuing interest in Africa and that everything that is here also gets interrelated into the other parts of the world. So what happens here impacts other places. So just think of it, I'm summarizing up in just a minute. 95% of the world's consumers live outside of the United States. And we got to know that I'm here representing Northern California. I'm here to help and be of service to help the small businesses to be able to reach their dreams and goals. And under President Obama's National Export Initiative, we have $1.3 trillion that is export money that we can generate by doing that. And that's why it's so important that we have all of us here. And I just want to say personally, women, we've been doing trading for a number of years but we call it shopping. <laughs> and so all of the shopping, even the silent auction, all of that is part of trading because we're going in between one person to another. We're buying and selling. And so now we just need to take that to a global market, which we can do through the internet. So all of these things we're doing right here in our own backyard. And may we continue to do it and do it overseas to help one another. Because the bottom line is the more that we buy and sell, the more that we'll have good paying jobs here in the United States. In conclusion, I just wanted to say that there's a quote from Kennedy that comes to mind. With the nation's eyes behind him in 1964, Robert F. Kennedy once said, no matter how talented an individual may be, no matter how much energy he might possess, regardless of how much integrity and honesty he or she may have, if that person is alone, they can accomplish very little. So we're going to have to work together to move forward together. We're in the world of cultures, united in learning, living, trading, and working together. So together we can make a difference in our community now and for our future. I look forward to working with each and every one of you. Thank you so much again for this honor. God bless you all.